Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. Since the last episode, I've been just finishing off the uh, the Green Science production. So now you can see up here, we had this um, stream here that's not going quite as quickly as I would like. What's been destroyed? Oh dear, the train's been destroyed. Oh dear, that's very bad. I'm going to have to have a look at that in a minute. Um, oh, actually I'm going to have a look now um, because that's bad, in, bad, in, in, bad enough. That sounds like more than just a, um, a meteor strike. Oh no, it was a meteor strike right in the middle of my um, LTN depot. Great, thanks very much. So, okay, my next episode, I suspect, is going to be me heading off to all of my planets and putting up meteor defences on them, because that sort of thing is kind of annoying. On the plus side, this train's probably... Yes, this train has switched over to manual, um, so it won't try and go anywhere. So, it's, it's not too serious a problem, but it is... It's annoying enough that I don't want this sort of thing to happen, and it could have been a lot worse. That was interesting timing. So what I was trying to say is that we had in the last episode, I oh in that mode, uh, I talked about getting the um, green science production up and running, and that's passing all the stuff through here as we saw, and to these computers, which are then making the green catalogs. I mean, actually, none of them are right now because there's a, a supply shortage of these one of the data types. But when it does, it passes them all the way along this belt here and up this belt and we've got quite a few of them built up here we're, we're turning them into um, into the an, um, analyst uh, an, analysis what, what do you what do you call these things anyway bio insights there we go it's the biological in so that biological catalogs getting turned into biological insights and obviously the memory cards getting spat back out as well uh, we've got the standard disposal system oh dear i don't think i've set that um Nope, it's okay, I just didn't have alt mode on. Right, I have set that up properly, thank goodness for that. There we go, as you saw there, and the uh, memory cards are going off down the disposal chute, and the insights are heading up here. We've then got, I've planned ahead a little bit here, so we've got these these belt, these splitters here are splitting off the biological insights, passing them through here, and onto another belt going across here, where these red inserters will be able to pass them from there into the into these machines. And at some point, once, these, this, once this research finishes, I'm going to be able to tweak those and set them to be doing the three science type of um, of, make, of making the significant data. So that'll then get even more efficient and we'll get uh, another 50% or whatever it is. So instead of getting, I think it's instead of getting six significant data each time, we'll go up to eight significant data. So that's, you know, that's worth having. They're also then getting passed up to here to this this machine, which is doing exactly what you'd expect when you, when you look at, when you notice it's parallel to, or no, the mirror of this one. This is making the green science packs, which are then going down this belt and going down the other half of the blue one. Now this was a bit of a challenge to cram in here because I didn't plan quite far enough ahead. <laughs> um, so my, my original plan was to have the blue ones on their own belt because they were getting mixed with the rocket science packs further down, then put pink and green on another one and then yellow on a final one but there isn't actually anywhere to put in that belt taking the yellow science back out again. The rest of it's okay. This is going to be, here is going to be where my yellow belt goes in, where my belt goes in with the yellow uh, catalogs and passes them up to these machines which will make the yellow insights and then up to here to make the yellow science. And now I can now put them on the other side of the pink belt. But that meant I had to do quite a lot of redesigning down further down here. So it used to be that these blue science packs will get merged onto the other side of this rocket science belt but now as you can see it's cutting through and coming along here so we've now got these two belts are for the four space science tier one packs and that meant over here I had to do a bit of, a bit more rearranging and rethinking of my uh, my belts as well so we've got now we've got the these normal science packs being fed in here by this inserter then the then the second one the rocket science pack getting grabbed by this long inserter that's fine that's how it was before but then I've had to put an underground belt and squeeze in this one and then this one to get all of to get all of those science types in here it's a bit of a mess I possibly could have done it slightly differently by in depth by putting at least there's an inserter missing here there should be one of those there like that one is um, I could probably have put this one in there and in with an underground belt and then had yeah so I could have perhaps have done this slightly more neatly but this will work and in fact this is working so I don't feel too bad about it I'll um, it's not until I get some more science packs that it's going to become a problem and I could always squeeze those out in up this side it's going to be interesting to get them through over here and I've not really left enough space down here but it, it could be made to work so with this, I am now able to do research that's involving all the science packs up to in and including this one. So all of these ones in the first row, in fact, um, but not material science one. I haven't got to that yet. And that's how I'm researching this one, as I mentioned earlier, which will allow me to make the um, 
the eight significant data per 36 insights. So that's going to be a little bit more efficient, generally better. Now, one thing I have considered is that perhaps, but given that I've got so many more blue insights available than I have the other colours, perhaps I should be producing my um, uh, significant data from those and being a bit, it would be inefficient, but because I've got so many more of those, maybe it'd be better. But I think actually a better plan would be to boost the production of the green ones and maybe even the pink ones as well, see how that goes, and, uh, get, and get it a bit more under control there. In fact, let's have a quick look over there. How, how bad is my production of them? I mean, at the moment, it looks it looks pretty much okay. These are all these are all a bit backed up. I suspect that is going down over time as I'm as I'm creating the green science because I'm not producing the well as you can tell I'm not producing the green catalogs at anything like a, a good enough rate. I think something stalled in there, but there in fact I'm going to have to have a look into that. But the basics are in there, and yeah, there are some bugs that need to be fixed. But essentially, it's, it's sort of working. I've got that working now, so that means I can now come over here. I can switch these from that over to doing the where is it that one and now that will make it as I said that bit more efficient because it's going to use the green or it's going to use all three colors to make the yellow memory cards I'm also going to have to hunt down all those memory cards that have been stolen away by the um, by the construction bots um, while I was while I was doing that but never mind that that's not too difficult the next thing I've done is so before as you may remember I had a couple of recycling plants in over here that were dealing with all of those um, broken memory cards and the scrap that was being produced by this place now it occurred to me I think this was I think this is actually I have to thank somebody in the comments for this uh, who pointed out that actually you can do more much more useful stuff with scrap and so I've now got this recycling station down here which is taking in again taking in the broken memory cards spitting them out as scrap and then these three machines are taking in the scrap and turning it, turning it into ore. And that means I can then use these, uh, what are these, thermodynamics facilities. And they take in vulcanite and a significant amount of ore, so an 8 to 1 ratio. And then they'll spit out uh, 12 iron, so that's actually quite a good ratio. Up here, this is, this, this is very worthwhile, certainly for in space. And I'm, so I'm actually getting a decent amount of the, uh, the metals now out of the scrap. And that's going to reduce at least a little bit my dependency. As you can see from that, that was unloading some iron there. So it's not really done it. But it's slightly reducing my dependency on bringing iron and copper up from, um, up from Norvis. So that's helping there a little bit. So those are my main things I've done recently. We've had the... Um, the science has been upgraded to take the green science. The uh, recycling has been drastically improved to actually produce useful stuff rather than just junk landfill. I probably should have done that a long time ago, to be honest. And we've got the flags up here. So this is doing the, doing the green science now, as you can see. The yellow science, I haven't got that working yet, but I've done a bit of thinking about that. So, um, yeah, that's really doing really badly. So as you can see from this diagram here, I've um, I've done my thinking about the uh, the yellow science, and actually this doesn't look too bad. And yeah, it takes in quite it takes in a fair amount of different inputs, but none of these are particularly difficult ones. Um, they're all except concrete. They're all things I've already got up here in in suitable quantities. I think I might need to start bringing concrete up by delivery cannon as well, which is yet another thing to think about. But in essence, this this doesn't look too bad. I need to have a look at the machines that make all this stuff. I think a lot of it is the these machines, these these red ones, the mechanical facilities. Um, how, do, how do you make those? And I think they were, yeah, they take a lot of concrete and they take gun turrets to make as well, which is a little bit weird. So I'm going to need to make sure I've got enough of them up here. But uh, in general, that's not looking too bad. I'm just going to need to make sure I've got a decent supply of concrete, as I say. Um, and then iron, copper, plastics, um, stone, more stone for plasma, steel, lube, are all things that are flowing around quite happily up here. The next step, though, is the. Um, it also requires the um, iridium uh, iridium plates in quite a few places, and that's another processing. Another that's another resource that I'm going to have to go off and find and build up a mine for. So at the moment, let's have a look. I've got my current planets. I've got Norvis, which is producing just stuff in general. Hinky Sesui, which is producing my um, Holmanite. I've got Tulip, which is producing the vault, the no, the, the green stuff. Um, Vitamelange. Norvis Orbit, which is producing the actual science. Frost is producing uh, Cryonite, and Myokin is producing the uh, the Vulcanite. So each one of these plant, each one of these places is essentially producing one of the resources I need. However, the other thing I'm going to need is ir iridium or iridite. And what's that one? That's a beryl. I've got beryl. Oh yeah, and beryllium is also coming from frost. I forgot about that. Um, so I need to go to either Kothar or 
Kothara Sturata, because those are both um, iridite heavy planets. Now, Sturata has um, a rather interesting surface that appears to be almost completely biters. So I think I'm probably not going to go there. This, this, yeah, I'm. I'm not sure I can. I don't, I don't think I can realistically deal with this with the um, with with the resources I've got at the moment, with the weaponry I've got at the moment. I just I'd land in the middle of it and then I'd immediately get mobbed and probably almost immediately killed. So instead we've got Kothar, which has this nice zero percent threat rating and still has a decent amount of erudite and some copper, iron, coal, and so on. So let's have a look at this planet or moon or whatever it is. There we go. That's um, not looking too bad. It's a massive iron patch and a Ma even bigger, twice the size copper patch there. Some stone around, that's good. Some iridite, that's a, a several million iridite around there. Um, so that's most of the stuff I own. A little bit of coal there. There's only 93,000 though. Um, but this is all very close to the sort of the, the spawn point. So we'll have a bit of a look around and see see what more I can find. I am going to need what I want to find on here. So we've got the we've got the coal, the iron. No, sorry, we've got the copper, the iron, the stone, the iridium, which is the whole point of going there. And as I said, there's that tiny bit of coal. So, so we've got most of the things I need. Uh, we're also going to need water. And there is water on this planet. There's a decent amount of that, so that's not an issue. We're also going to need a decent supply of coal. And it'd be nice if I could find some uranium as well. If there's a decent patch of uranium, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Because then I can start getting nuclear power without having to ship it in from, um, from Norvis. And the thing is, if I do end up shipping it in from Norvis, or so if I do do end up doing it on this planet rather than shipping it in from Norvis, I need to make sure I take over enough um, two, three, five in order to kickstart the uh, Coverex process immediately, rather than having to leave the planet doing the Coverex wait, because that's a ridiculous faff and it's completely unnecessary. Okay, here we go. That's a bit of area explored. So as I was saying, plenty of water. That's 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 good. We've got lots of iron around. Some massive iron patches. Obviously, massive iridite patches. That's the whole point of coming here. Now there's some uranium there. So that's nice. Two hundred twenty-two thousand. It's not a, it's not the biggest of patches, but I think that's gonna that should last me for quite a long time, especially if I'm careful with it. And there's another small one over there. It's only sixteen thousand. I'll probably completely ignore that. Um, oh, there's more iron down there. It, as a Oh, nearly a million coal there. That's not too bad. It's a long way from everything else, though. Um, is there any more coal? It's it's kind of hard to see against this um, this dark rocky, this dark background. Um, do, do, do. Oh, there's a patch down here. That's 1.3 million. That's um, not too bad. Yeah. Okay. So if I try and if I try and establish my base down here in this sort of area, that's going to get me this coal patch. There's a reasonable iron patch there, although it's a funny shape. Copper, copper, iridite. Is there any stone around here? Stone's up there. Those are rubbish stone patches. Surely stone isn't going to be the problem. I don't want... Having to ship in stone from another planet just seems like an absolutely ridiculous idea. Let's explore this area a bit more, because this is where I'm thinking of setting up my base, because it's got that big uranium patch. And this decent-sized coal patch. Okay, here's even more coal, so that's good. Um, and more iridite, and even, even more coal. And, oh, a decent, there's a decent iron patch, that's good. Um, so that's it looking even better, and there's some more iron up there. But still no more stone. That's potentially going to be a problem. I mean, yes, I can ship stone in. I don't think I use particularly enormous amounts of it for making delivery cannon stuff. Is that, is that water there? Yes, it is. That's, that's handy. Um... Okay. Oh, there's a again a little bit of stone. Maybe I'll I'll start use I'll I'll gobble up this stone patch and then I think the iridium processing does produce a little bit of stone. So as we go through from washed iridium, yeah. So we, there's a 25% chance of getting some stone out there. Um, and there's some sand comes out here. So maybe between those, that'll give me enough stone just about to keep the um keep it running. Um. Let's see, oh, is there any... I'm going to need oil as well. I don't see... I haven't seen any oil patches on this planet. Apart from a tiny, tiny, tiny one there. Okay, I'm going to assume this planet basically doesn't have oil. So I'm going to run with the assumption that I'm going to need to do coal liquefaction in order to get the oil supply up here. Um, and that means I need to remember to take some heavy oil with me, as well as all of the other stuff. Although, if I if I do forget because I'm an idiot, which is quite possible, I can always get it from over here if I'm absolutely desperate. But I'd rather not because that's going to be awkward. 
but I want to, so I want to set up somewhere around here, and I can set up train systems to go out to these these little coal patches and iridite pa Actually, down here, this this is a good place. We'll send a train down here to get the coal and the iridite from here. Iron here on the also on the way up. Copper's nearby as well. There's more iridite, and the uranium's just up there. So this sort of area looks like an excellent place to start. And we've got oh, and the uranium is quite close to water up here as well. So if we just snake some iron, an iron belt up this way. Then we can have iron. We can have uranium processing in this sort of area, and then my power power plant are in, in perhaps about here. Okay, so this looks quite promising. We've done um, setting up bases on other planets before, so I'm going to go through that pretty quickly. I suspect my next the next episode, I think I'll open with me saying, "Look, tada! Here is my here is my new base on Kothar." Um, isn't it pretty? And uh, and look, we've got and we've got the erudite ready to get ready to ship out in 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 its in its ingot form because, as always, you want to sort of push it through and um, and 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 send it, and send it off in its most processed form. Now we are going to have to bring in vulcanite in order to do that, and cryonite. So that's going to be, and yeah, neither of those grow on this planet. So that's that's going to need have to be shipped in. There's no nothing I can do about that. But potentially, it's not going to get used in enormous quantities. I don't know. We'll we'll have to find out. So, thank you for watching. Uh, this has been a bit of a shorter episode than normal, but I guess I've not done quite so much as I sometimes have. So, um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it, and you'll join me next time for uh, some more of this when I'll have, yeah, I'll have my base up and running on this planet, hopefully. I mean, you know, something might go horribly, horribly wrong that I want to talk about, but in theory, I'll have a base up and running on this planet. <laughs> I'll see you then.